Hey everyone, this is Alexander James Guitars, and this is the fifth episode of Make It Monday for the Fretless Guitar Build. From our last video, we glued on the headstock veneer and pretty much buried the truss rod. So now I have to use a chisel to get it out. I've just used a razor blade to score a line here so that while I'm chiseling it out slowly, it doesn't chip into the area I don't want any ebony to come off of. Once you have the truss rod revealed, I like to go in here and clean it all up. This part is covered by the truss rod, but just that little extra step is noticeable on one of these custom handmade guitars. I want to get in here, clean this all up, and then maybe even hit it with some of these files to make it look smooth and nice. So now that the truss rod channel here has been completely cut out, and just roughly sanded, the next step that I'm going to do is drill the tuner holes for the tuners. Okay, so 17 64ths drill bit chucked in the drill press here, and I'm going to be using these Grover open back tuners for this guitar because they're super lightweight. These tuners have a ferrule that goes in the top of the hole and as you can see that's obviously way too small of a hole. So I'm going to use this tool right here to countersink this into the headstock. And there's the countersink for the ferrules. Now I want to align the tuners to how I'd like them to be on the back of the headstock and I'm just going to use a pencil to mark where those screw holes are going to be and I will go down on each tuner and mark where it's going to be. I like to run the edge of the plate of the actual tuner parallel with the edge of the headstock here. So for instance, that one would be like this, this one would be like this, etc. Rather than just all in a straight line. I have all of the screw hole locations marked and I'm just going to make a little pilot hole so that the small drill bit doesn't wander while trying to drill these holes. I'll spare you the pain of watching me drill all of these holes for the tuners, but now it's time to test to make sure that everything's good. I just basically put the tuner in, line it up, and it should line up with all the drawings I've made here on the back of the headstock. That side's good. 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 There. Perfect. Now, my headstocks are rounded on the edges here, so it's not a 90 degree edge to this face. It's all rounded. So that's the next step we're going to do, and that's why I've drawn these lines on the back of the headstock, because obviously you can't go past where the plate of the tuner needs to be. So I need to draw the ferrules on the front, and I'll get to work on rounding the headstock.
I've rounded the headstock and it's pretty rough right now but that's something that I'll clean up later. The back of the headstock here just needs to be sanded. It's again also pretty rough but not too much more work has to be put into the neck because we're pretty much ready to work on the body. So as it stands right now, the neck doesn't fit in the slot. This is as far as it'll go. And I always do this, I always make the neck a little oversized so I can shave it down by sanding on each side and get the perfect fit that I want After we get the neck fit to be really nice so that it glides in and out pretty easily so that glue can actually go in the slot, I'm going to be working on the bottom of the heel here because I just need to get this perfectly flat so that it'll create a good gluing surface in the actual neck pocket. As well, I need to make sure, because this guitar has no frets, I need to make sure that the distance from the top of the fingerboard to where the bridge would be in the lowest position allows the actual bridge to bottom out the strings on the fingerboard and then you would bring the action up from there. Just upon visual inspection I can see this is roughly where I want the neck to be. The bridge in its lowest position would bottom the strings out on the fingerboard top so that's good. Now we'll take a measurement. So I have the neck fitted in the neck slot and I'm going to take a straight edge and run it over the middle of the fingerboard and over top of the bridge. And then I want to take a measurement and see if it's within what I need it to be. Here I'm aiming for about 5 eighths and this looks pretty good. Put the neck in the slot and I want to start taping this area off so that I don't have to do unnecessary glue cleanup later on. For the glue up, I have two big C clamps. I have the glue. I have a little radius block to protect the fingerboard when I'm clamping and I just have a brush to put the glue in. So now what we want to do is take the neck out very carefully because we don't want to mess up the tape job we just did. Put a little bit of glue in the slot here. Not a whole bunch because a lot of it's going to squeeze out. And brush it around with the brush. To the actual neck. So I just like to put a thin coat of glue on the neck as well. And when you're doing thin coats of glue, you have to move fast because you don't want the glue to start setting up. Push the neck blank in, push it right against the back, and then press it down.
and then any squeeze out. And try and get the actual clamp part right as far back as you can on the tenon and then make sure that that piece of wood is underneath. Tighten it down, put the radius block on the top here, get your other clamp, and then put this at the heel. So there we go, neck is set into the body. We're good to go for some rough sanding on this entire guitar. So check us out next week for the next episode of Make It Monday on this fretless guitar build.